Moving on to item number 31. The sum of 20 distinct prime numbers is odd. What is the smallest number? Should it be two, three, five, or seven? Okay, so think about this. Let's do some sort of analysis here. From here, if all 20 distinct primes are odd, then 20 times an odd number is even because we know that 20 is even and even multiplied by any number, be it odd or even, is always even. So therefore, since it's impossible, uh, I mean, in this case, the answer is looking for odd. Therefore, it should be, since the sum that we're looking for is odd, then one of them should be even. Hence, the smallest number should be two. That is letter A. So what happens if two, if you have 19 odd, 19 times an odd number, then uh, 19 times odd is odd. And even, which is two, two plus odd, even plus odd will give you an odd number. Hence, two should be the smallest number in this set. 32, simplify this one. X squared minus nine all over X squared minus three X divided by X squared plus three X all over X. Is it A, B, C, or D? What do you think? So remember, if we are dividing rational expressions, we are actually multiplying the dividend with the reciprocal of our divisor. Hence, I copied this one first, and I multiplied it with the reciprocal that could be achieved by interchanging the numerator and denominator of our divisor. And you see, we proceed now to the multiplication. So the same thing earlier, what we have to do is factor each polynomial as much as possible. So the x squared minus 9 is factorable into x minus 3 times x plus 3. For the denominator, we have uh, the GCF could be factored out. So we have x times x minus 3. The x could no longer be factored. x squared plus 3x could be factored as x times x plus 3. From here, you could see that the ones in red would cancel and become one, the ones in green also, and the excess will also cancel here. And what is left is one over X, letter A. Okay, moving on to item number 33. Two sides of a triangle measure nine and 12. What is the maximum length of the third side if it is an integer? Is it 18, 19, 20, or 21? Recall earlier that the sum of any two sides of a triangle should be greater than the third side. And if we derive formulas related to such, we could actually see that the length of the third or the remaining side should be between the absolute difference and sum of the two other sides. So if I get the difference of uh, the absolute difference of so 12 minus nine, that's three. And if I get the sum, that would be 12 plus nine or 21. Hence, the third side should be between three and 21. Note that three and 21 are excluded because this is an open interval. Therefore, the largest possible value of X is 20, letter C. Next number, 34. What is the smallest interior angle of this triangle if side AB is four, side BC is five, and side CA is seven? Is it A, B, C, or it cannot be known? What do you think? If you could still recall your hinge theorem or the inverse of this theorem, you could actually see or realize that the smallest interior angle is opposite of the shortest side. Since the shortest side is AB, 
which has a length of 4, then its opposite angle C should also be the smallest angle in terms of measure. Hence, letter C is the correct answer. 35. The two diagonals of a square measure 3x minus 4 and 2x plus 5. How long is each diagonal? Is it 21, 23, 24, or 25? What do we know about diagonals of squares? What we know is that diagonals are equal. And hence, we have a sufficient reason to say that 3x minus 4 is equal to 2x plus 5. And with such, we have 3x minus 2x equals 5 plus 4, and that's x equals 9. And if x is 9, we could now determine the measure of one uh, diagonal by substituting it either to 3x minus 4 or to 2x plus 5. In my case, I substituted 9 to 2x plus 5. So therefore, each diagonal measures 2 times 9 plus 5 or 23 units boy, letter B. Okay. 36. If x plus 1 over x equals 3, what is x squared plus 1 over x squared? Is it 7, 6, 5, or 4? So here, algebra-wise, um, don't I believe, no, you may look for the specific values of x, but I think that will make your work quite longer. In our case, we will do this even without knowing the exact value of x. So for such, we have x plus 1 over x equals 3. Squaring both sides, that will do the trick, gives you, you square the first term, that's x squared, plus twice the product of the first and second term, you have 2x times 1 over x, plus the square of the last term, which is 1 over x squared, equals 9. If you could see in the middle term, x times 1 over x is just 1. So you have 2 times 1, or simply 2. That's why you have x squared plus 2 plus 1 over x squared equals 9. Subtracting both sides by 2 gives the desired expression, which is x squared plus 1 over x squared equals 7. Letter A. 37. If 3 times the square of x minus 3 subtracted by 1, is equal to 11. What is the smaller value of 2x minus 1? Is it 4, 3, 2, or 1? From here, we could actually see that adding both sides by 1 gives us 3 times x minus 3 quantities uh, squared equals 12. We wanted to isolate the expression with a square. So we will divide both sides by 3. Hence, you will have x minus 3 quantity squared equals 4. And now, we could extract square root. And doing such, you have x minus 3 equals plus minus the square root of 4, which is 2. Remember, square root, there should be plus minus. That's the reason why I had here. And adding both sides by 3 gives you x equals 3 plus minus 2. Now, from here, we could actually see that x has two values. The first one is when we have plus, so 3 plus 2 equals 5. And the second one is when we have the minus, which is 3 minus 2 or 1. From here, the small, of course, you could achieve the smaller value if of 2x minus 1 if the value of x is also small. That's 2 times 1 minus 1 or 1. Letter D. If you use the value of x, which is 5, you will have 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 9. But we're looking for the smaller one, so we have to adapt. 
1. D is the correct answer. 38. What is the equation of a line that passes through 1, negative 2 and 4, 7? So you are given two points now. Which of A, B, C, and D is correct? So from here, in, I, in my case, there are many ways again of doing this. In my case, I opted to look for the slope first using the formula M equals Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 all over X sub 2 minus X sub 1. And from such, uh, by substitution, uh, this is our X sub 1, Y sub 1. This is our X sub 2, Y sub 2. So you have M equals 7 minus negative 2 or 7 plus 2 all over 4 minus 1. 7 plus 2 is 9, 4 minus 1 is 3, and this simplifies to 9 over 3 or 3. So your slope is 3, and this time I would like you to utilize the point slope form. I use now m equals 3, and I could choose either 1, negative 2, or 4, 7 as my point. In my case, I chose 1, negative 2. I replace y sub 1 with negative 2, and I replace x sub 1 with 1, and the m with 3. That's why I have y plus 2, because y minus negative 2, that's y plus 2, equals 3 times the quantity x minus 1. Distributing the 3 to the x minus 1, you have y plus 2 equals 3x minus 3. And adding both sides by... Uh, I mean, simplifying this gives us 3x minus y equals 5. And if you could see, it's not one of the choices. Letter E is the correct answer. I hope you could still remember that if the correct answer is not found among the choices, you have to answer E. Thank you. 39. Consider f of x equals ax squared minus 4x. If f of 3 is 6, what is f of 5? Is it 30, 35, 37, or 38? We could see here that a is missing. So I believe we have to solve for a first. Using the fact that f of 3 is equal to 6, we will uh, substitute 3 with 6. Uh, substitute x, rather, with 3. So f of 3 is equal to a times 3 squared minus 4 times 3. And since the value according to the given is 6, that's why it's equal to 6. Then you will have this one, 3 squared is 9. So nine a times 9, it's 9a minus 4 times 3 or 12 equals 6. Adding 12 both sides gives 9a equals 18. Dividing both sides by 9 gives A equals 2. So now we know the value of A, which is 2. We have to substitute it back here. Therefore, your function is f of x equals 2x squared minus 4x. And we're looking for the value of f of 5. So f of 5 equals 2 times 5 squared minus 4 times 5. That becomes 50 because 2 times 25. Here is 50 minus 20, which is 30, letter A. Good job. I hope you got it. Number 40. If I equals the square root of negative 1, your imaginary unit, and I squared equals negative 1, what is the value of 3 plus 2i multiplied by the quantity 1 minus i? Is it 1 minus i? 5 plus i, 5 minus i, or 1 plus i. Let's see if you got the correct answer. So employing again the FOIL method. So 3 times 1, that will be 3. 3 times negative i will be negative 3i. 2i times 1 will be plus 2i. 2i times negative i will be negative 2i squared. But remember that the value of i squared is negative 1. So I have here 2 times negative 1. 
the negative 3i plus 2i simplifies to negative i. That's why I have it here. Simplifying further, negative 2 times negative 1 is plus 2. So I have here 3 minus i plus 2. Combining like terms gives 5 minus i, which is letter C. So far, so good. I do hope so.